Hey guys, Jeff here. Welcome back to the shed build. Today, I'm going to show you how I framed this shed post and beam, right? I'm doing my take on construction technique that'll save a ton of materials. Let's just jump right into it. Cheers. The easiest way to cut off a post is to buy yourself a $500 saw that's twice as big. <laughs> but most of us don't own that. So we'll just show you how to use a regular skill saw here. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use that as my cutting guide, line my mark up on my saw blade, and then I'm going to use the hole to then re-establish the line here and then here, and that'll finish the cut. There we go. So I'm going to be using the, this to create a table to, to guide. These saws can be a little heavy, so we're just going to line up those two black marks and away we go. This time I line up the black mark with the cut. Last cut, we'll get everything nice and flush. <sighs> Perfect every time. Next step is to put the saddles on. This is designed for a four by four post, it's three and a half wide. And then this section here is three inches, which represents the thickness of two beat boards put together. And we want that to be flush off the post. Here we are. We'll set these in all in place here. I seem to be just tall enough. Wow, I'm a monster. <laughs> so there's still a misconception out there that you need structural nails. A lot of guys are still working with structural nails. It's a pain in the butt. Hammer nails all day long. You can just drive a screw with a six-sided head, hex head here. Like this is so much faster. Structural screws, of course, have a stamp on them. And there's a number. That number is related to the strength capacity of each screw. So if you're on a job site and an inspector sees that screw, they can read that number and know that it's rated for hanging all kinds of joists and hardware and anything structural. The same capacity that a nail is. So there's nothing new to do here. Just got to put a screw in every one of these holes. Piece of cake. Now you can be your own structural engineer on projects that don't require a permit. <laughs> so. We should qualify that where I am here in Ontario and Ottawa, the building code says as long as it's less than 10 feet tall and the outside dimension is less than 10 by 10, there's no permit on temporary structures like this. So I can build whatever I want. So for me, that means I don't have any inspections and no rules to follow. It doesn't mean we don't follow good building practice. We just don't have to follow any rules. Now, here we go. I'm ready to roll. I just need to make some of my beams now, eh? This is going to be quick. To make beams, the best pro way to do that is this. Measure at the base, outside to outside. Yeah. In this case, 1 13 and 7 8. And what we want to do is we want to make our posts exactly 1 13 and 7 8, or a beam, sorry. So that when we put it in, we just go flush here and flush over there. And any little oddities in the way that it's sitting, you know, there's, there's still a little bit of flex left in this. It'll work itself out in the wash. <laughs> All right. All right we're, gonna, we're gonna learn you something today. Here we go. This is a little strange here to be using my square technique. Just gonna draw a line and free cut it. In a scenario like this, you wanna cut from this side, okay? Whatever dominant hand you're using to cut, you want that to be furthest away from your sawhorse. That way, the excess material falls away and it's not any weight on it, okay? So, I'm just going to line up my saw blade point here and I'm going to look to see if the teeth are on that line and they are. Once I start, it's a short distance to navigate and you can get out of whack. Once I start cutting, I'm going to keep an eye on this, but I want to keep this plate parallel to the board. And as long as I push straight through, I should be just fine.
<laughs> you think I've done this once or twice. I think I just got lucky. All right. Okay. 113.78s. That's awesome. Now comes the interesting part. I'll show you this. If I put them together end to end, look at the bow. Matt already drew this out for me, showed me the curve. This one's got a curve too. And it's going this way. Okay? It's what we call a crown. And because this is going to be a structural element that takes the weight of the roof, and in a four-season climate we get snow load, we want the crown up. We also have a bow, which is great, because what we're going to do is we're going to laminate this sucker together and pull the screws nice and tight and make ourselves a beam. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the ends together. We're going to do all this on angles. And I'm going to make sure that they're flush, because there's a lot of movement in a lot of directions. There we go. That does a nice job there of closing that gap, eh? Funny thing is about structural beams is this wood is a lot stronger when it's all nailed together. Now for me, it's a very short roof. It's not a big span. It's already overkill, but that's because I got the experience to go with it. If you're not sure what to do, you can always take your nail gun. Now that I got this together, look at that. Wow, that's quite a warp. Time for another trick. We're gonna close this gap and get rid of this extra bit of heave here, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is because there's a gap, if you were to put a screw on an angle, by the time it hits the wood over here, it's higher up the, the board. So I like that angle, I'm gonna go like this. And this is, by doing this on an angle and not closing it as I screw, it'll close on its own and it'll actually sink this down to the same height as this board. So there's the height of the first board. They're different, so I'm gonna take this gap and make it work for me by screwing on an angle. Now I've made contact. I'll do this slow. So we're just gonna tack this together in a few spots. Try not to put a hole in my hand, Jeff. So it's still protruding a little bit, all right? I'm not happy with that because I'm gonna be putting a roof structure on it. I want it flat. I'm gonna install it for today so we can move forward. And then next time I come, I'm gonna bring my hand planer. And I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit before I put any interior wood in there for the roof. Yeah, I don't like planing off a ladder, but you know, we gotta move forward today. Next step, stick that beam in, I guess. A little bit of a Laurel and Hardy scenario here, but we'll be all right. Okay. Boom. Ah. All right, up we go. Ah. The cool thing about these saddles is it not just holds it in place, it keeps it from rolling left and right on you. So it's a really safe way to work. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure it's flush over here first and add some more structural screws. And then I'll come over there and tighten up that side. Okay, all right, well, here we go. All right, boom, that's officially not going anywhere. <laughs> now, I just want to give a warning here. I don't want you using what you see here as um, a homemade solution to removing a structural load-bearing wall and sticking this in place. This is not what it is. This is just snow load of a small roof of a shed that has no building code, okay? So <laughs> this is more than enough for our liability scenario. But don't go thinking, oh, that's it. Just a couple of deck screws every couple feet. We're good to go there, bud. Nope, nope, you'll get someone killed. <laughs> Here, bud. Here we go. Hmm. All right, so we got a bit of a twist. This is just a shed. Okay, don't, don't go hurting yourself. But to make it pretty when we're done, it's better if it's out level by a hair and you don't have any wood sticking out past the corner. That way your sheathing goes on nice. 
So in this case, because I've got these structural screws that are a little pronounced, if one of these beams is sticking out just a hair, it's not an issue. Okay? Trust me, when you're building a shed, you don't want to turn this into a lifelong project. So you're building it, it's because you need it. <laughs> you don't want this dragging into next year. Here we go. If you've ever seen framers frame a house, um, from the street, everything looks really nice. Get up close. <whistles> Nasty. This is called framing carpentry. It's not finished carpentry. Or finishing. I don't mean people from Finland. I mean like to finish the job. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Thanks, Max. Max actually reminded me to finish the job here. There we are. I'm gonna screw both sides. So I'm using an eight foot four by four post in a deck block that was installed flush with the ground. So I know that this is only eight feet tall from the grass. Plus my seven and a quarter usually is what a two by eight is. I'm well within my 10 foot even after I put my roof on. Easy math. I'm not even gonna try to get close to 10 feet. I want my finished panel on the front here, no more than eight feet, all right? Because I don't wanna have to have a seam and then do waterproofing and waste mit building materials and cutting off all this extra waste. Keeping it the total height under eight feet makes all your building materials work with one seam and it's still much easier. So resist the temptation, make your shed 10 feet tall. It really is a waste of time and money. All right, oh, I forgot. I'm gonna go do the other beam now. You don't need to see that one. Same thing, just a little closer to the ground is all. We are creating a single slope roof, after all. <sighs> what do you think, Max? Let me get this bad boy here. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna put two by four on end to frame in our roof, okay? And really what we're looking for here is uh, we wanna find the slope because the same angle here will be over here, but on the other side of the wood. Now, you get into watching people build stuff on YouTube. They're trying to explain it from a position of, oh, I've done this a thousand times and I've got the right tools. When you're alone uh, at home alone, you gotta re rely on this thing. So here's a system that'll work every time when you wanna translate an angle. First, you gotta measure the height of both of these. Now, I am at 92 and three quarters. And we'll get this height, 81 and a half. Okay? Or because I gotta have the same denominator to do math, we'll make this four by doubling it. So we got two quarters, okay? Now I separate it. So I'm left with a quarter and I'm left with 11. 11 and a quarter is the difference in the height. So all I do, and I know this is going to seem almost really silly, measure from the ground to 11 and a quarter. Now remember, all of this is getting covered by sheathing. Okay, there's 11 and a quarter. If the height from the ground to that mark is the same dis difference as that height to this height, and these are level, it's now a parallelogram. So I can put a screw right off the old corner here. Okay. And I can take my lumber, set that on the corner where the post is, rest it on the screw, and simply trace that angle from the backside. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Now I've got the same angle on the front. Now my roof, I'm not looking for an overhang on the front, okay? I'm going to make my roof square and then I'm going to put on my metal and then I'm gonna cap it with a piece of wood afterwards. I don't need an overhang. If I want an overhang, I would simply take that angle, cut it off on a scratch board and then use that as a template to trace my, my angle anywhere I want to on the board. So, cut off the back and cut off the front. All right, I better do that again. There we go. Before I go and cut this, I am gonna grab my level and just confirm that these posts are sticking straight up because that could be disastrous. This system only works if the posts are level. Okay, and this one is out. <clears throat> Here we go. That one's fine. Okay, now I'll show you. 
Here's my new line. I just drew a new line. I was a quarter inch off. <laughs> Always work with it level and your line trace will be perfect. Now, for good measure, we're gonna cut this. We're gonna cut uh, this one. We're gonna cut one for the other side just to square off the post so nothing is moving and twisting and leaning for the rest of the build. And then we'll use a special bracket to install it. By cutting it flush, it allows me when I'm going to put my paneling on to cover the post, the beam, and the rafter with the exterior siding. That's gonna make the secret here, the secret sauce to my build. I'm gonna install this, I'm gonna show you the hardware, because once you've got a clip like this, you'll never go back. So this is just another version of the Hurricane bracket. Do they have a special name for it? No, okay, whatever. Point is, is it goes on a flat surface to the top of the surface, all right, whoop, like that. And then you can screw through the side and into the cross member and tighten it all together. So we're gonna measure in and install these temporarily just to hold the structure together while we build everything. Uh, my roofing comes in next week, and so we'll make that video where we actually install the roof proper. But for now, this is just temporary, so we give everything a little bit of strength. And I don't know why, but I'm measuring this off at 16 because I'm just used to it. <laughs> this is how I roll. All right. Whew. Beauty. All right. Uh, I flush to the front. We'll throw some screws in here so it doesn't fall down on my head. I'm only putting in two screws for now because this is somewhat temporary. I have metal roofing coming, so I want this, these boards to land in the bottom of the valleys of the roof. I don't want it on the, on the ribs. That way I don't have to add extra wood for no reason, all right, going perpendicular, just so that I always have a screw surface. I don't mind placing it just so because wood's expensive these days, have you noticed? Ay yeah, yeah. Over here, this is my center line, that black mark. I'm going up until I make contact with the wood, okay? You'll notice if I do that all the way up, I've got nothing to screw to. So I'm gonna find a happy place where every one of my holes on this bracket can make contact. And I'm showing you this as a more permanent way to get it done. And then we're gonna go manipulate this beam until it's flush. There we go. Okay, I'll cut one more of these for the other side. All right, so we showed you how to use the hurricane ties to square this all off, right? And we're gonna use them for the middle. So I'm gonna explain my change of plan here. I'm just gonna screw this in place. I have uh, two beams, one's pressure treated on the outside. Just because I got some pressure treated in the order, wasn't sure if I was gonna need it or not or where I might wanna use it. Um, anyway. Because I'm definitely going with the metal roof now, I wanna keep it over here. There's a possibility that the metal roof where it joins with my one by six that's going on the outside, there might be a, a seal issue. So I wanna press treat on the outside if any water got there. It isn't gonna destroy it. Um, I'm also going flush on the front and I'm gonna extend out a couple of inches on the back. This is just going to uh, give me a little bit of a protection for the hardware on the, the door on that side. I figured, what the heck, instead of going flush and flush, might as well extend it inches. Oh, I can't even talk today. Nice and flush here. All right. Okay, so there we are. So now we got the exterior of our skeleton built. We got posts, we got beams, we've got uh, roof ridge, I'm good with this. So I got a door here, I need a column here. I got a door here, I need a column here. And I got a door here, I need another column here. <laughs> so let's get those three locations in next. 
and then we'll be able to go on to the next stage of this kind of construction, which is to hang all of our horizontal 2x4s. We've got special brackets for that as well, which makes it really simple. But first is this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put an entry door here. I don't need it really huge, right? But if I'm going with a 30 inch door, in my experience, I need a 34 inch hole for that door, right? Yep. Because the, the jam on it is inch and a quarter. So if I add two inches, I got lots of room. So we'll go to 34. There's my mark. Now everything else is level. I put the front of that there. I need a level on here. Okay, so the bottom stays where it is, and you can move it around until you're happy. I'm just going to trace it right here. Oh, sure. You're good with that? Okay, there we go. Now, can you go put that on another 2x4? Run over, and we'll get that same cut twice. And then we'll nail them together and stick it in place. And then we're good to go. I'm going to go get my brackets. Now, for this element, I've got this left, that leftover 4x4 post. So I'm going to cut it down and use this as my structure that'll work all right and then this will have a door we're creating like a pantry area for the garden tools uh, these folks do a little bit of gardening but you know they're no green thumb that's for sure all right off you go <laughs> why are you guys so strange green thumb you're gonna hear it all the time now now that you've heard the expression you understand the blue thumb can I get the level over here too? Okay. So I get to be brutally honest and you're gonna have the same problem. This post is not perfectly square with the building. So, and this partly, it's all my fault because we're moving too fast. We're trying to film a video. I try to think about all the steps you need to learn. And we knew it was out. We redug the hole, we moved it, but we didn't double check its location. We just built it in. Oh well, these things happen. Can I just get that across the ground? Because it's on a bit of a slope, and I want to just make sure that this is in line, so when I'm all done, it looks normal. Yeah. There we go. So we're going to work off that. And there's my point of 36. Can I get a level on this now? Right here on the ladder. Sorry, my bad. What if we have a level in here? Are we close? Perfect. Okay. I'm going to put this right into the joist. There we go. Problem solved. How big of a hole do you want? That's the only question. So the design for this thing is kind of all up here. I made a few notes. But basically, off this door, I'm putting in a lawnmower. Lawnmowers need almost five feet or more, so you can roll it in and there's still room for the handle. So this is pretty huge. And I don't want to waste the space. So I'm going to make this door for here. I'm going to make this one a 32. I'm going to relocate that post here. There we go. To the inside. Flush on the outside again for our sheathing. That 32 is at the gap. Good. I'll measure here now. 33. Mm, same thing, only different, I guess. Yep. Well, since it's in perfectly straight, might as well just leave it like that. Yeah, so the, the posts and the beams, if you think of it, it's kind of like your skeleton. And the posts that I'm putting in now, they're more like muscles. It's not skeleton, but it, it makes everything strong. And it, it's, it's what everything else is going to get attached to eventually. So, I'm going to put another door here. This is for the lawnmower. Uh, we don't want it to be too wide, right? Because lawnmowers aren't that wide. They're usually about 24, 26 with the wheels. We're going to go to 30. So I'm making a mark on the floor again. I'm going to get the level and a piece of wood, trace the top, double it up, stick it in just like the last time. All right, so this is post and beam construction checklist because we're ready to move to the next step. We've got our posts. we got our beams. And then we have these posts, which are simply there to facilitate hanging our horizontal pieces, okay? So now, I have a doorway here secured, I have a doorway here secured, I got a doorway here secured. 
we want to fill up the rest of this area with horizontal boards so that we can start sheeting, which is like amazing. <laughs> so we're going to get into sheeting. And then once I get the back finished and the sides sheeted, we can add our interior wall. This is coming together so quick. I'm telling you right now, uh, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Save yourself a fortune. Have a little bit of fun too while you're at it. All right, here we go. And you know, if you get in over your head, you can always just join our membership program, right? We have a forum. You can send me pictures and email back and forth. And I can help you troubleshoot on your project too. Cheers. <laughs> now remember, one of the goals with anything you build outside is you want it to dry. So make sure you leave air spaces. Doesn't take much of an airspace so things can dry, but you want to make sure that you have a little bit of gap. And use top and bottom screws so that things don't work. That's it. You keep it dry and you use enough fasteners so nothing ends up warping on you. Oh, hello, darling. Always work so that if the drill slips off the screw, it doesn't go into your hand. Those injuries hurt. I learned that one the hard way a few times. Quite a few times, actually, huh? for whatever reason. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to use screws to put on our sheathing. A sheathing is a three quarter inch plywood T1-11 siding. It's almost identical to the house, which is 40 years old. It's just a little bit newer version, probably a different mill. It doesn't need a whole lot of structure, right? I mean, I could literally put one of these horizontals every two feet. I don't need any more than that. I don't have to go 16 inch on center. It's just a shed. So here we go. I'm going to mark it off two feet, four feet, and then, and what I'm marking is the top of my board here. There we go. Piece of cake. Now, and this is what I'm using. This little L bracket. Now when you go down to the structural aisle at the store, you're going to find there's a lot of options for purchase and hardware. And one of the best options, is they make these great little brackets for like the end of a fence, because a lot of fences, they'll put horizontal rails and they make a bracket for it. You screw it to the post and you just drop your, they're all it. Big surprise, supply chain woes. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it flush to the outside and I'm gonna put it down to my line. And instead of, instead of resting the two by four on top, I'm just gonna stick it from underneath and add the screw. It does the same thing. All right, and then for good measure, I'm also going to throw one screw on an angle after I'm all done. So it'll all be braced, nothing's going to twist. At the end of the day, adding this hardware really, it really isn't necessary. I know it's just a shed, but I like to make sure that major components that keep things from falling apart <laughs> don't fall apart on their own. All right, so we're going to do that. Bottom rail, pressure treated, and then interior lumber, the other three. We're going to wrap this thing up, get it somewhat closed, and then we can start on the sheathing. Now, if you've installed everything level, like horizontal, you're fine. Uh, just a trick when you're going to start sheeting. If you just take a marker across the middle, run around the corner and make a mark. So now when the sheet comes all the way to this corner, at least you know the middle line here. They're four feet wide. If you always have a reference point, so you're not screwing on an angle, drilling random holes in the wall, that'd be beneficial. Right there. You got it. Here's our product. Not baggish. Okay, so we're going to go flush off the front. So here's my siding, T111. It comes treated. It's already treated to be an exterior board. So you're not in a rush when you're working with this to get a finished coat of paint or stain on it. So don't freak out about it. It's kind of like OSB, okay? They make this stuff with resin, which is why it's been hard to find in the last couple of years. I've actually um, been trying to track it down at a few different stores and uh, it wasn't easy to get a, hand, a hold of. Again, I'm just using my marker, right? And when I'm working like this, I'll just like reference something on my body. So I know I'm hitting my chin is the right height. Here we go. Now that's installed. We'll finish off the rest of the screws in a few minutes, but we're gonna just let it overhang and we're going to show a couple of different tricks. We're going to be able to throw a chalk line on it and cut it afterwards. And on the other side, we're going to cut it in advance. And then you can decide what do you think is easier. Um, 
I'm kind of a cut it off afterwards kind of guy, but I'm also crazy. Matt, just run right off the, the high side into the groove. If it's a little short, it doesn't matter because we're capping the ends. All right, so just run that groove. And let's get as much of it as close to the sawhorses as possible. You don't waste anything, right? We're gonna pre-cut this and then the next board as well. Everything is gonna get cut at 81 and that'll be perfect. All right, Matt. <clears throat> okay, so the trick here is get all your siding on and then from the back side, we'll drill holes in the corners and then we'll cut the door out and then uh, go from there. So Matt just finished cutting my next panel over the back corner. I got the measurement for the cutoff and it comes to here. I'm just gonna drop my level on this and then pinch, compress where the mark is so that that becomes the lever, the lever point. And I'm gonna set my bubble level right there. All right. So now I can get this measurement and then give it to Matt and he can cut the angle. We're gonna go a little shy because we're trimming it anyway. Go to 90. <laughs> okay, that's the stuff right there. Okay, and then that's plenty. Now watch this. We're gonna cheat a half an inch here. I'm gonna cheat a half an inch there because we're capping the edges. Yes, sir. Okay, so in my mind, I knew that this post, um, plus the beam, plus the two by fours, ends up at 86 inches. Bam. Kinda was aiming for that from the beginning. I wanted to get within an inch of it one way or another. So that works out really well. So it's just a full sheet. So now we're just taking the last sheet, gonna cover up this hole. We're gonna cut the top off in advance. And then uh, we're gonna be able to frame in for our door cut out the extra panel and use that panel to become one of the sliding barn doors. And we've got another panel set aside for the other barn door. And that'll be good, because this is gonna be a man door. I'm gonna just get something from off the shelf at the depot or something, right? It was something with a, a window in it. And uh, that'll be fine, right? And good. So now you can start to see this coming together. We got our master plan, right? Um, this is gonna be a factory door. So whatever I cut out from here, it's the widest door. I can use this as the hanging barn door to cover one of these two spaces. This is the narrowest, so I'll most likely throw it over here. That way I'm gonna have a hole that's 30 inches wide and I can have a 33 inch or 34 inch door from that barn door size. Even if I cut that out and then I add a little backing to it, like some two by two, and then I cap it in cedar just to make it look pretty, it'll be a really nice looking door. And then it'll give us me a nice closure on the outside as well, okay? This one I'm just gonna cut out right now, just so I have access to the rest of this, <laughs> so I can keep working. If I start putting up the last wall, I don't have a door yet, I'm in trouble. So we're gonna give this a quick rip and uh, I'm gonna save this until later. I don't have all the tools that I need with me today to be drilling and cutting and so we'll save that for a little later in the video. Um, the, the day is coming to an end. Today our goal is to get our interior wall in, get the garden shed area here framed up, and then throw a couple of boards across here and get some skin on. I've got some pressure treated plywood we're gonna use for the interior wall. Nice and simple. And then I can throw on my ledge because I'm getting a slab, as like a piece of tree for my countertop. It's gonna be on brackets, so it'll flip off. We can close the awning 
open the awning and it'll just roll over. It'll be two inches thick. We want to set our rail here at 34 inches, so our finished height is 36, which will be standard for stools that will go with this bar afterwards. And then once I've got that on, then we can start sheeting the outside, keeping all of our leftover scraps in mind so that we can have the, uh, the, um, the awning built custom out of the same material that was cut here, so all the lines work. This is good. Do the math, one step at a time. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, <laughs> like I tend to do. So here we are. Um, I'm going to cut this out, make sure I gain access, and I'll just keep working away here for a little bit. i got about another hour or so, I'll get some more work done. Go team. But uh, she's feeling really solid here. Now that it's all skinned, right, like that's pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. By the time I get the front of this framed, it's going to be a pretty solid structure. And uh, yeah. What else you want in life, eh? for an update. Okay. All right. In behind here is now the garden area for all the tools. We just got to put plywood on this wall. And we'll do it from the front side, inside, later. That way they have a solid surface to mount anything they want to put in, uh, shelves or brackets for hanging rakes and stuff. But that'll be all isolated off to that back door. Then here, that's going to open up. That'll be the where the lawnmower comes in. We're putting a shelf across that so we can pull out all the cushions for the outdoor furniture in here. And then we've left this exposed. I'm thinking of doing some really cool shelving. Put glasses and pictures or whatever, right? Now we've got to frame our knee wall, frame in our sides, and build the frame for our awning and the bar. It kind of makes sense now, I think. I think it's making sense. I'm feeling good about it. Here's how this works. This is going to become a door, you walk in, and we're going to have a bar counter slab from a tree here on brackets that fold up and down. So then we'll just fold it into place after we open the awning. So we're going to create some supports for the awning, it'll be a gas lift, holds 100 pounds each side. And then you'll have shade to seat, sit here with bar stools, we're going to go 40 inches high, plus the counter, get some 30 inch bar stools, it'll be comfortable. And it's fine, it doesn't matter if you're using nails or screws when you're building. It depends on your tools. If you have a nailer and you're comfortable nailing things together because you're not going to have to take them apart and cut them a second time. Like sometimes in the afternoon, I only use screws because I always screw up. And uh, right, it's, my measurements are horrible after I get lunch. All the blood leaves my head and goes into my stomach. I guess it's just a mess. Matt has to save my bacon all day long. But for this, we're just going to nail it together real quick. Stick this in place. Visualize what it looks like finished, I think. And then we can all have a chat with the homeowners about the height and functionality and we can make adjustments if we have to. But. Let's do it. So remember we had two different options for attaching this panel is what put it up and then cut it or cut it and then install it. This is uh, fast as far as getting progress made but it is a real pain in the butt when it comes time to actually cut. Right. So now I got to boot here on the unstable ground with a chalk line. Uh, back to here. Really got a lot more out there than I needed. I'm aiming for about a half an inch below the top of the 2x4 there. Now I'm going to set the wheel on my skill saw. This is a 3 quarter inch ply product. So I'll set the skill saw for 1 inch deep. And I'm going to put a little score mark in that 2x4 and I don't care. I just want to guarantee that I get it all the first time. All right, here we go. We're going to cut this in two sections because I'm not going to reach out and be able to start there. And this is a relatively heavy saw, so we'll just uh, get her done here. There we go, perfect. 